Hi, I'm Stephanie Wainwright. I'm a wife, a mom, a business owner, and my life is chaotic all the time. So I created this podcast to help you find the funny, the good, while navigating through the chaos. This is Chaotic Compass Podcast. Okay, what is up? Stephanie, Chaotic Compass, what is up, you guys? Hope you're having a fantastic day, week, month, year, whatever. Or maybe it's not, and that's why you're here. Are you listening to me bitch and sip, and it makes you feel better about your life? So here we go. I'm just going to um do like a little recap of what's been going on. I kind of haven't uh, posted in a couple of weeks. We've been just stupid, stupid busy with birthdays and anniversaries and excuses uh so here i am finally recording finally got some time finally got some peace and quiet to do this do this thing do a little thing so had the kids birthdays kylie has turned 14 officially liam is officially double digits in the 10 he is the 10 in the 10 in the 10s in the 10s he's 10 whatever um had their birthday party that was cool finally actually had a birthday party where i allowed them to invite a couple of friends over yeah no it's fucking weird whatever like because we have always had gary and isla like ryan and i've been together for seven years so it's been all that i could to just pay for what we have (laughs) with these guys usually I invite my sister (laughs) my sister and my brother-in-law we all go play like laser tag or something you know or we go to Great Wolf Lodge which is you know pretty rad look it up but uh this year we did bowling yep 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 so uh that's cool a little bit about kind of some background so I don't know if you know but my mom's a bitch let's just cheers to that yay how do you transition from going into your kid's birthday party into your mom's bitch? So leading up to the week um, of my kid's birthday and because Kylie's birthday is the day before my son's birthday, lead- that week leading up to my kid's birthday parties, my mom and I were at TIFFs. I have noticed that when we get into these, uh, it's somebody else's birthday that's not hers. Or it's somebody else's, like, somebody else's big moment. She has a hard time with that because I guess the spotlight's not on her. I'm, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if that's actually the truth, but that's how it feels over, you know, I've almost 37 years old and I, this is what I've noticed over the last 30 years. So anyways, that week leading up, you know, I can tell my mom is anxious and she's picking apart a lot of fucking things and My mother, for the last, pretty much since we moved in, she's, she's been having like bitch fests. Like she'll have a hard time with the kids are too loud or, you know, the kids are too messy or my husband's too messy. And it's like, I fucking know this. I've been living with them for years now. And I didn't try to hide any kids when we moved in. You knew we had four kids and I have a husband. We have two businesses and a partridge in a pear tree. So Like, you knew all of these things when we moved in. So it was the day of my kid's birthday. So we kind of have been having these little tiffs about, you know, these things are are pissing my mom off. And the day of my kid's birthday's party, uh, that morning, apparently the kids were too loud coming down the stairs and so my mom wants to make it a point at breakfast to be like so after you get back from your birthday party I'm gonna teach you how to walk up and down the stairs and I I was biting my lips so hard like how do you teach a child how to walk up and down the stair why don't you just instead instead say Hey guys, you were just really loud this morning. If you could be more cognizant, if you could realize, hey, could you go up and down the stairs slower and more quieter? That would be great. Thank you. Instead of being like, I'm going to hold your hand and teach you how to walk up and down the stairs. That's condescending. That's rude. And I was having a hard time. 
I know I should be the parent and I should buy, you know, I shouldn't be biting my lip and I should fucking say something, but I didn't say something. I bit my lip real hard and I left, but I slammed the door because I knew as soon as I said something, it was, that's what she wanted. She, because it wasn't her day. It was Kylie and Liam's day. And she was just trying to, she was picking a fight. And as soon as I slammed the door to walk outside and then that's when she scream so here we go and all my kids are like sitting there at the table like this at this point is verbal abuse to my children so any one of my children could go back to their other parent and be like hey nana's losing her fucking shit and i don't feel comfortable living with that you know i don't feel comfortable living with mom i don't feel comfortable living with dad so i could lose my kids because of how she's acting around my kids Like, that's how serious I fucking am taking this shit. But she didn't say shit to me for the rest of the day. She fucking lost her shit. She, you know, slammed the door. She went into the bedroom. And that was that. She didn't come to my kid's birthday party. That's fucking cool. But rewind. So that was the Saturday on Tuesday night. Ryan and I had gone out to dinner. We came back. We actually had taken the boat around. It was like the one nice night. We'd taken the boat around, gone to dinner, and came back. Um, And we were just kind of lounging around until I needed to get up to... Or lounging around until I needed to go to bed. Get up. Get up to go to bed. How about that? Um, But she came in. She was like talking about... Kind of plucking the... The nerve of, oh, hey, you guys went out to dinner? Like, yeah, 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 we went over to, I can't remember which restaurant. And and she was like, oh, wow, they're kind of expensive. And like, yeah, yeah, you know, we, we had some dinner, we had some drinks, and then we took the boat back around. Oh, wow, that, ha- that had been like at least $100 easily. Like, and my mom's not the type of just come in there and like hang out with Ryan and I. So she's she's plucking at it, right? And uh, because she knew that morning I was I was upset at my husband because I'm trying to figure out we've got a conference that we're supposed to go to next month, but I I've already called it off because there's no way because I don't have any other childcare. It's me and and Ryan. I was assuming that my mother would be more than willing to help out on the days that I couldn't just to get the kids off and on the bus. It's really not that big of a deal. You literally just stand there because the kids are self-sufficient. So they're 14, almost 12, 10, and 8. Like They're fucking sufficient. They can fix their own breakfast, they can pack their own shit up, they can get on the bus, they can get off the bus, and typically they need some coaxing to get an afternoon snack, get their homework done, and and make sure their stuff is ready for the next day, but it's not that big of a deal. And that night, you know, we were, because she knew that morning I had been arguing I guess is not really the right word but discussing loudly about how I'm frustrated that we can't go to this conference because we don't have anybody to help out with the kids there's there's nothing it's either Ryan and I and that's it there's nobody to get the kids on and off the bus and it sucks and so because I knew that my mother had already kind of put her foot down as far as hey you know I'm I can't do that. Like, I don't know her reasoning. It was all bullshit. But anyways, and the, we're sitting there playing Fortnite and Ryan's on his phone. And, you know, we're just kind of relaxing as she comes in poking, poking the bear with the how much money we spent on dinner. And then, you know, because um, we had been talking about before my mother got in the room about trying to figure out the situation of... I'm like, yeah, she, because I made the comment, like, yeah, we've got this conference that we're trying to go to next month, and I'm trying to figure it out. Like, just nonchalant. I wasn't asking for her help. And she made the quick response of, well, I've got Austin, which is my nephew, which is my sister's kid. And my sister at the time was pregnant, and I've got, you know, little baby to come. And so I, I can't help out with that. You don't 
<laughs> I'm trying to be nice with my fuck it. I, so Austin and uh, Millie, which is my new niece, congratulations to my sister who just had a baby the other day. So I have two, you know, little, little baby. I've got Austin. He's a year and a half. And I've got Millie, who's only a few days old. And my mother, my, my sister's on maternity leave right now. And the conference is in a few weeks. My mother thinks that she has to be at my sister and my brother-in-law's beck and call. My brother-in-law, who has MS, who was diagnosed with MS just shortly after my uh, nephew was born, doesn't work. He doesn't work anymore. He was a police officer. And unfortunately, well, you know, with his symptoms, he, he can't work. And um, he doesn't work. And so my mother thinks that she needs to be on the back and call for Austin and my new niece, Meth- Millie. <clears throat> but can't help out with getting the kids on and off the bus for her other four grandkids. And it made it very clear that my mother only has two grandchildren, right? You know, and I'm like, fuck it, you know, whatever. And so that happened Tuesday night. My mom lost her shit on sun- a Saturday afternoon or Sunday, Saturday morning. My mom lost her shit on Saturday morning. And so, and then it was quiet. My mom didn't say fucking shit to me. They, they ate their, their meals separate in their room. They kind of confided. They like did solitary confinement in their own den and didn't come out didn't say shit to me. I had a couple of conversations with my dad. Basically, my mom doesn't want to live here anymore. And it came to like, you know, hey, okay, let me do some research of like what we can do. And it's like, either I have to refinance, which our interest rate right now is like, because my dad and I are on the loan together or on, you know, we, we purchased this house together. And in order for my dad and my mom to move out, I need to take over the loan. I know I'm giving you guys way too much fucking information and I'm bitching and sipping right now. Just stick with me. Anyways, I would have to refinance this house into me and Ryan's name in order to get my dad off so they could go and move and either purchase something else or go wherever. Well, guess the fuck what? My interest rate is super fucking low because we bought it in 2020. And so right now I'm not going to fucking refinance because if I refinance with just the amount that we owe right now, I am going to increase my payment by, it was like $800. That's that's the stupidest fucking shit I've ever heard. So my mom is trapped and then I'm trapped with my bitchy ass mom. So yay for me. That's fucking fun. Um... But the good thing that came out of this, because my mom had this bitch snap, and so she was giving me the silent treatment, and it's like, I guess that's my punishment, but it's like, I don't want to fucking talk to you anyway, so it was basically a blessing. So for weeks, there was literally no talk. There was no talk in this house. Well, I mean, obviously the kids and I and my family talked, but my, I had a couple of conversations with my dad about letting him know, Hey, it's not financially responsible to refinance the house right now. (laughs) So, (laughs) so you're stuck. We're stuck. Everybody's stuck. We got to figure out how to live together. Yay. Because that's what we signed up for two years ago and it hasn't changed. So what the fuck? Anywho, but, uh, you know, I came to the realization that my mother um, ha- has been playing favorites my whole life. And finally, my husband heard the, the, the statements that came out of my mother's mouth about, you know, well, I've got to focus on Austin and baby Millie. And she's literally choosing my sister and my sister's kids. And it's like nothing against my sister, but like, fuck you, mom. I've got kids too. Apparently you only have two kid, two grandkids. You have one daughter and two grandkids instead of two daughters and six grandkids. That's fucking, fuck, that's great. That's fucking great. So I'm literally reliving a lot of like feelings that I had in high school. So I'm kind of navigating that childhood trauma so that's cool. That's great. Um, yay for me. I drink a lot. It's it's great. Um, another thing that uh, happened. So I'm kind of wearing them now, but you can't see them. Um, Duluth makes these fire hose pants. And I got those this week. This is not an ad, by the way. Duluth doesn't sponsor me yet. 
um, fire hose pants. I love them. They're super comfy. Ryan gets has gotten a few pairs from his um, mom for like Christmas and shit. And then he kept buying them because they're amazing. They're kind of expensive, but they just had like a birthday sale or something. And we got them for like, like it was like 40% off or something. And so they're wicked freaking awesome. Super comfy. All the pockets. You guys, pocket inequality is a fucking thing. I talked about this in one of my earlier episodes. Like, I think it was like episode one or two. But pocket inequality is a thing. I have so many pockets in these pants. I love it. My actual full iPhone 11 or 12. I don't even know what I have. My big ass phone fits all the way in my pocket. Love it. And I've got like more pockets. I don't even know what to do. I'm going to like stash snacks in my pockets now. So, but this is also giving me like vibes of back in the high school because I used to wear boy shorts. Like I would actually go to the boy section and get like cargo shorts because I love the boy shorts and like how I had such deep pockets and like they were just comfy. And I didn't have to guess the motherfucking size. That's another fucking thing that pisses me off. A size eight is not the same a size 32 in dudes is the size 32 it's true all the way across why is it so different for chicks i don't fucking understand but we're not going to get into pocket inequality and size inequality we're just gonna but anyways i've got all the high school vibes right now between dealing with childhood trauma (laughs) again in my 30s and you know cargo pants because like I tomboy it's cool it's fine so that (laughs) don't you just love how I segue from like bullshit to bullshit I promise it does make sense in my head does it make sense for you no it's fine uh another thing that happened so Ryan and I celebrated our anniversary uh three years married seven years together he's still alive he's still kicking he has been on the episode in a while but I promise he is alive um but we, uh, so last year we had, uh, glamped in our car. This year we actually rented a whole cabin. So we, we had that. Um, it was one of those cabins that they, um, they don't rent out past a certain point because the, it's literally not insulated. Um, and we had gone up there and I think the low was like 40. <laughs> so it was fucking cold. They have heat in it, but it's like one of those mini split units that's like super small and, So it was cold. Um, We also went up there when, so mad rep to Florida. I'm here with you. Love you guys. Um, Hurricane Ian moved up the coast and kind of came right for pretty much where we were at staying. It obviously was the remnants of the hurricane, but we couldn't run any trips that weekend. So we ran away to where we couldn't be contacted with cell phone so we were like don't don't fucking talk to me we ran away um but because we ran away the remnants kind of found uh, followed us found it found, what what followed like found and followed at the same time flowed vocabulary is so great um the remnants followed us up into west virginia and so there i mean the winds weren't too crazy but apparently it's more than they're typically used to up there and it rained the entire time we were there rained yo we were we left friday and it followed the rain we were running into the rain the whole way up it rained saturday it rained sunday all the way back it rained monday when we were here at the house i think it rained tuesday it was like five days it's like i ain't seeing the sun and Three hundred forty nine days. It was so much fucking rain. Apparently when we left Saturday it was sunny down here, like at the house, but and half of where we like the little area where we live, half further down lost power, but apparently we didn't lose power here at the house, but we lost power at the cabin. We are fucking freezing up there. Well I am. Ryan's fine. I brought extra clothes, but apparently not enough. So 
we're we're trying to keep warm by keeping the fireplace they have a fireplace in there we're so we're pumping it full of fire and so we checked in with the office and they're like yeah we don't know when it's going to be the power is going to be turned on we got a generator running up here um so here's some extra wood if you want to burn some wood we're like fine fuck it whatever so that was kind of sucked but it got you know turned on by that afternoon that friday night when we were there shout out to old mountain tavern in marlinton west virginia so apparently the guy that owns the bar danny it was his birthday shout out to danny in marlinton west virginia (laughs) and homie was throwing down a party it was literally him with just this massive random ass playlist i was like at first we thought it was like bad karaoke (laughs) we were just like what the fuck this one guy is only singing and i was like okay just one more beer and we need to get the fuck out of here right it was so bad. <laughs> and we stuck, you know, we, we drank the one beer. And then it finally, you know, he stopped singing as much and started just playing the songs. And and being more of a DJ instead of more karaoke style. And it was thoroughly entertaining. At one point, Homie learned my name. And shouted out to me, Stephanie, do you know this one? This is for your birthday. And everybody's like, oh, it's Stephanie's birthday. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's not my birthday. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, and they just got married. Buy them some shots. And we're like, what the fuck? No. <laughs> Anyways, it was definitely entertaining. We had fun. We, you know, hugged the guy on the way out. It was pretty, pretty cool. I had no idea Marlinton, Virginia, which is this podunk town that barely has cell service, knew how to throw down. Yes. So uh, that was very, pretty much it. Yeah. (laughs) So childhood trauma, new motherfucking pants, throwing down in Marlinton, my kids turned another year older. Ryan and I have been married another year. So what the fuck? Um, a lot has gone down. And I'm, I, I, like, I'm seriously, I am so ready for the new year. I'm, already, I'm over this year. It's October. It's October. It's fall. I, like, the days are getting shorter. Like, I've got to drop Kylie off in the dark. Like, I do not want to get out of bed. I want to go to bed early. Like, fuck this cold weather. Is it cold? Is it hot? It's going to be fucking, you can see your breath in the morning, but you put a sweater on and by the afternoon, you're fucking regretting it. What is going on? Every year we go through this and every year I despise it. I just, I fucking hate it. Like, I can't wait for spring. I'm already over it. And like the leaves are like barely changing and I'm like, fuck it, Uh, you know. So, yay, it's fall. (laughs) Not really, fuck it. Uh, We did, oh, yes. So I'm like recapping and I totally forgot. So we went to, on the way back from West Virginia, we stopped at this brewery and I apologize, but I cannot think of the name of it off the top of my head. It was in Stanton. Or right outside of Stanton. I learned that it's not Staunton. It is Stanton, Virginia. Uh, my bad. Somebody up there scolded me real quick. Uh, so we stopped in there um, to get a snack and to grab a beer. Well, I tried their hibiscus bullshit beer. And it was obviously a beer. And it was horrible. And I didn't like it. And Brian wouldn't even finish it. Because he's like, that's not a beer. I don't even know what that is. So... But they had that wasn't there. It was um, a cider that um, that I got, and I read more about this the cidery. It's Old Hill Cidery. It's up in I can't remember the little town. Oh, Timberville, Virginia, which is north of Stanton on eighty one. I think it was like about 30, 45 minutes north. It's uh, close to Harrisonburg. 
side note which is cool because we made a whole weekend out of it they have an orchard there show walter orchard and greenhouse so we normally go to um okay so we normally go to carter's mountain and in 2020 they uh started uh, limiting the number of people that could come in there because obviously of COVID. So you had to buy tickets in advance. Um, but they had, have continued to do the tickets in advance and there's no discount for So you still have to pay to get into the place and it doesn't get you anything. And they're really quite expensive when it comes down to the amount of apples that we bring home. We buy donuts, we buy cider, like not the hard cider, like the actual apple cider. They have a bowl rock place there, like a tap room. So yes, I do get cider when I'm there. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, there's got to be a better way. And so I started researching this Old Hill Cidery and I was like, oh, Ryan, it's on a apple orchard that's so cool we have to make a weekend of it and they only charge you instead of by the pound like uh, carter's mountain does they do it by the bag you buy a bag you fill your bag up and you're good to go we spent 35 dollars on apples which is like a third of the price that i normally spend at carter mountain and they have a really cool cidery with a lot of different things but I waited in line in the cidery so so long but the kids the kids had fun they rolled up and down a mountain for a while I brought my camera and they had fun taking pictures of all the things and it had really cool views it was really cool definitely want to try to go on a Saturday maybe it might be a little you know more organized I don't know maybe maybe they'll get your shit together but it was really cool like I just we didn't have to walk down a mountain to go to an orchard or walk all the way back up it was all right there it was pretty cool so i appreciate shout out to show walters orchard and greenhouse they were really cool and it looked like a really cool venue as far as um like a place to get you know married or have a reception at so today i am drinking um so this is the old hill cider it's their Virginia strawberry. I picked something that seemed kind of, it's still seasonal. I'm still trying to keep, you know, summer rolling. But there we go. Virginia strawberry hard cider. And all right, for, it's, a, it's in a can. It's in a, a 16 ounce can. It's six and a half percent. But I feel like it would be where all the basic white girls would hang out if they knew it was a cool place. And now that I know it's a cool place, I'm a basic white girl. So Virginia strawberry. Mm -mm -mm. Just it's just a good like it's so good. It's it's their base. It's super light, even though it's got a high alcohol content. It's super light. It's not super sweet like um like Sly Clyde. Some of their stuff is, um, and it doesn't it doesn't finish as hard. It's super light. So I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, go check that place out. Um, go be a basic white girl with me. Um, go be a basic white dude. Go be basic. It's it's so much fun. So yum yum yum. They had a bunch of different different flavors. Um. Some of them have more of a champagne finish to it I that were dry. I can't, ugh, yeah, I can't do that. But they had a ton of fruits. They had a peach one that was really good. Anyways, I'd have to look it up. I'll put in the um in the show notes links to to their website and to show Walters and all of their stuff that we did. So to finish off today's episode, you know I'm gonna bitch and sip about you know childhood trauma next time because I can't leave this one alone. It's really bugging the fuck out of me, and I'm trying to navigate through it, and I'm having a hard time. So thanks for listening and navigating through this past few weeks of crazy birthdays, anniversaries, cideries, all the rees, all the things. So I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate all of your love and support. If you really love today's episode, you should subscribe. And if you subscribe, then you get notifications of when my next episode launches. So another way to be super awesome would be to leave a rating and review 
or recommend it to your friends and family. If you're wicked awesome, you've already done all three. Another way to keep up with me and my crazy family is check out my website at chaoticcompass.com and I do blog and other stuff there. So I appreciate everything for you guys. I do this for you. So keep it up because the more you subscribe, the more I do. Mm -hmm.